Uh, Barbara Boye, within every spiritual tradition, you find the same kind of a dynamic intention that you would within any uh, sustainable group. That is, in order for a group to exist and remain a group and retain its character and its particular mission and its values and produce the kind of results that it intends to produce and has produced over generations or uh, centuries or even millennia. That group has got to establish and uphold certain rules, certain orders. There's a certain protocol and the way things that must be done. And to that extent, individuality must be compromised. The individuals must conform to the rules and the structure and the protocols of the group. Otherwise, the group ceases to be a particular and distinct group. Likewise, a group, um, like a religious group, cannot snuff out individuality, cannot deny and invalidate um, individual personality and uh, innovation. And so... Within the structure of the group, there must be some room to encourage and um, refine individuality and creativity, but do so in a way that still reinforces the values of the group. And so, as has been said of you know, a democracy, sometimes the group must sacrifice for the individual and sometimes the individual must sacrifice for the group. And it's between those two that you, you strike the best balance, right? Within Orisha lifestyle, you got a lot of different mechanisms that uh, create exactly that sort of tension and that sort of a dynamic. For one example, within the strictly religious framework, you've got the relationship between um, one's orisha, right, which is a collective. Um, if you are an adherent to the Obatala society, for example, well then everybody is doing the same kinds of things, okay? Everybody's going to wear white cloth, for example. Everyone's going to have the same taboos, right? Um, because those belong to the group. In order for us to uh, uphold the, the vision of Obatala and as a, as a principle that governs our society, we all have to do certain things. We have to all not do certain things. And then on the other end of the equation, you have one's ori. Right? Now, ori is, is the one that is particular. That's the aspect of your individual destiny or the destiny of your lineage that manifests in a particular way. And you're afforded all the, the, the leeway to be as creative as you can to manifest the... the, the the brilliance of your own, your own ori, right? But, but still, your ori cannot supersede whatever uh, rules and regulations there are of your orisha, okay? And it's through striking a balance between your individual expression and the uh, parameters set by your orisha that you get to be a better person and um, the society that you belong to gets the benefit right, of your uh, expression, your creativity. And so the particular role that Ifa plays in all that is LRP, or Romila is the, is the intermediary of fate. Or Romila acts as the go-between 
who is constantly explaining and, and demonstrating and defining for everyone what you can do in order to maintain balance between I and we. Aboraboye. Aboshishet.